think it was 10 years ago, uh, and it was the very first year that, uh, that the trail started, and we were only about 14 venues um, at the time, which is extraordinary when you think now, 10 years on, where, well, we're certainly 100 strong in artists. I think we were about 30 artists at the time. I got involved with the trail about, I think it was nine years ago, just after it started, and I heard about this group that was showing, and I'd only just started painting again, and thought it would be a good idea to get involved. I think it was the artist Kath Mead, she lives around the corner, and a couple of other artists, they all lived on the same road. And it, it seemed a really great idea to exhibit in your own house. And it's amazing how many how many artists there are. Oh, it must be a good nine years ago, I think. And Kath Reed, who's one of the main North Bristol artists, she she asked me if I'd like to show at her house. And I saw how many people Kath was getting in her house, so I thought I'd give it a go. So that's that was when it started, and it's um, I've done it every year since. Well, I, I was actually just doing um, a sale in my front room in, in the house I lived in then, and an, uh, an artist called Kath Reed was living six doors down. She is at number six, and I'm at number two A, and um, we happened to have chosen the same weekend to have an art exhibition of our work. And then we did it again the following year, and uh, a couple more people joined in. And the third year we did it, there were people queuing outside to get in and feeling very much, we felt very much that this is something this area could really enjoy. It's a, an event that people look forward to every year. The great thing about the Art Trail for me is I'm my own curator here. Uh, I don't have to move my work, it can stay in situ. It's where I think my work's most comfortable at the moment. Um, I see, you know, people coming back time and time again. Uh, they enjoy the weekend, they come out in the snow and the rain. And lots of people visiting the trail say, oh, once the, once the trail has happened, I know Christmas is on the way. I have to say, it's quite a quick recovery afterwards to get Christmas organised as well. People make a joke about it, but it is true. It's a great way to snoop around other people's houses as well. And it's fun because there are some wonderful houses. You've seen yourself, Tony Burroughs' house, and just how amazing that is. It's a super community event. I like to work in oil. Um, um, and what I tend to do is I do an under sketch and I, um, I layer it up. I never work on a blank canvas. I like to work on a canvas that's uh, a different colour just purely because it's white just seems a bit too scary. There are some years I feel more organised than others. I wished I had more work, more new stuff. Um, and there are some years that, you know, you, I'm really excited. I can't wait because everything is completely new. The idea of working with Ardman, I mean, it's just, it was just a dream come true, really. So I submitted three designs, and to my absolute delight, two of them were accepted. It's another form of being creative, really. Um, it's almost a break from the artwork, is to go to the allotment. Snell is extraordinary. I, I wish I had time to spend more time with Nell. I look at her work and I, I just, I'm in awe, really, of, of her, her creative process. My subject matter is quite varied. I can do anything from just um, still lifes through to quite surreal, odd stuff with 
odd characters in it and all sorts of gods and monsters and what have you. Um, or cats. Hello, I'm Sheila Dillon and welcome to this BBC download of the Food Programme. For information on the BBC's terms and conditions of use, visit www. I always say that I'm a realistic artist that really wants to break out as an abstract artist. I sort of, I love patterns and textures and colours and light and I like to grasp those things but inevitably it comes back to me putting them into a sort of fairly realistic setting just because that's how it comes out the end of my fingers. This year was a little bit different than usual in the fact that it was only a nine month year and I'd come back from travelling for three months, very inspired by what I'd seen and wanting to work on work from those travels and um, so it was a very different offering to the North Bristol arts audience in the fact that I had very few Bristol paintings and quite a lot of Australia and, um, uh, and the countryside, Wiltshire countryside. Depending what music I'm listening to and depending what mood I'm in, I either throw the paint around, um, I also mix it with um, spray paint. I'm playing with light more than anything. I think there is a need to be connected to to, to creative people, and um, I thought, why not? Why not share that? So I've been teaching art and design, and I teach fashion as well. I also have um, days here in my house where, where people come and they just paint with me. I often get people um, who recognise me in the street and say hello and um, I'm not sure where I know them from and I sometimes think, well, they might, I, might, I must know them from the art train. They may, might have been, I might have been pointing at, pointed out as the artist. Well, I was lucky enough uh, to get a tip off to go to Tony Burroughs' house and um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. It is, it is wonderful. The ambience is just is brilliant. What Tony does and her passion for mosaics and her, 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 her level of skill um, and the pure size of the artwork that she produces is just, it's second to none. I've got lots and lots of boxes of different colours and different textures, old ceramics, um, vintage ceramics that I've bought and sadly smashed up even though some of them might be worth something these days. I just get carried away and, and the artistic mood sets in and, and while I'm doing it sometimes I think, is this going to go next to this? This is, a, this is a strange pattern, that's not going to go next to that. But somehow it seems to work.
Laura and I have exhibited for, gosh, nine years, I think, together. This is the first year that we're not. I was very fortunate, I think it was the second year of the art trail, uh, to need, I was needing a venue and Hugh was new to the trail and he, uh, I remember clearly sitting in the meeting and him saying, well, I've, I have a venue with, with uh, plain white walls. So we are able to put our work up very quickly, in sync, um, well, I think very professionally. Rather nicely, what's kind of an aside is that Hugh grew up uh, on the, um, on the coast uh, in Pembrokeshire, near Fishguard, looking out to the St George's Channel. And I grew up in the southeast of Ireland on, on the coast, uh, looking out over the St George's Channel. Uh, funny enough, this is the first year we're not exhibiting together. Uh, I'm in a house a couple of doors down, actually, his sister-in-law. Nell and I know each other from age 17, when we actually used to hitch across Somerset to get to Yeovil Art College. And then our paths went in different ways as she went to Falmouth. And then when I was about 30, I decided to make a break for it and actually come and live in Bristol. A friend that I kept in contact with from the Yeovil days um, gave Nell my address. So she invited me up for the weekend to see what I felt and I absolutely loved it. So consequently, within about a month, I really got into city life. The main interest started in Bristol when I got the show, the one person show at the Honor Feeney. That was 1988 and that was my, my big break really. Um, the show was a complete sellout, which is unheard of at the Honor Feeney, so that was really good. Um, from there I got offered an exhibition in London. I sold from the London Gallery, I sold to Saatchi and Saatchi. So I sold four pieces, which is still up in their boardroom to this day, I think. You have a box per artist, and I've forgotten how many um, leaflets are in each box and you just have to organize that they get distributed whether you do it yourself or you find um, somebody's children who like doing it and um, encourage them by crossing their palms with silver um, but we found a collection place because you need somewhere where everyone could come to on a day and it's very very strict because it's such a volume of um, boxes that you can't live with those for very long. You get a folder on the day with all the support materials all at the same time when you collect your box. So your balloons, your bunting, um, quizzes for children are all there together. I think it's absolutely wonderful how it comes together. So nothing to do with me. <laughs> I think it's a, an awareness raising uh, organisation to be part of. It's great to be part of an artist community and that's the whole point, that is why people were drawn to, uh, to joining. The impact on the community, it, I think is huge. It's a, it's a really good, enjoyable weekend. It's exhausting but it's really, really good fun. I think the pure fact that there's a waiting list uh, and that often the only way to get in is if a current artist takes a sabbatical um, is proof enough that that it, it, it works really well. What I actually like about opening my home is that I can um, be hospitable and, and I can offer teas and coffees and I sit down and chat and I see friends that I haven't seen for a long time. Friends that I've actually made on the trail. because they put such a price on top. I, really, I understand why they do, but they, 
and then the percentage they put on top kind of makes a lot of artwork inaccessible to a lot of people. So I'd much rather sell from here and then I can sell them at basically at wholesale prices, I suppose. Because pieces are quite large and as <clears throat> you know, they, they can take a month to six months to make. Um, I haven't got many of them, but I do hang on to the ones that I have. I don't sell them on purpose because they're part of the house. I make money in other ways during the art trail. I sell cards of my work and I also have a little cafe in the kitchen which um, is kind of a bit quite vintage in feel. I have some of my old plates and things. I think it was um, not a particularly busy year. I think because I was in a new setting, I had less people than if I was back in the heart of St Andrews, which seems to be where the real um, masses of people come through. But it was a nice select crowd. <laughs> I was looking at the map and I know that we've got people on the waiting list and you do wonder there's another debate to be had if only we could have um, more people whether they organise themselves for the same weekend and you could fill in some of the gaps whether that would help or not I don't know it's a debate to be had. What's interesting is that you get people coming back year in, year out. Even if you know that they're not going to buy from you, they, they want to see what you're doing this year. It's a very, for me, it's, it's one of the best things that's happened in my art career, really. So it's, a, it's very important to me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> stop fighting.